Hello, my name is Stuart Dean, and this is my research into development of a bioengineered desalinarized xenograft for mitral valve replacement, all of which I'll explain later. In the US alone every year, there are approximately 21,000 mitral valve replacements, and it is estimated that in the year 2000, 1.8% of the US population had some form of mitral valve disease, and this will rise to an increasingly aged and obese population. Forecasts for the global heart valve device market range from $1.5 to $1.7 billion in the year 2015. We can see that valve replacement does represent a significant issue. The mitral valve can be found in the left-hand side of the heart, preventing reverse blood flow from the left ventricle, the chamber which supplies the body. Its failure will lead to loss of oxygen and nutrients to the body, resulting in symptoms ranging from shortness of breath to heart failure. The mitral valve is made up of several distinct areas, the annulus, the leaflets, and the subvalvular apparatus. The subvalvular apparatus prevents the leaflets from prolapsing and have been shown to play a part in retaining the natural shape of the left ventricle, keeping it efficient and minimizing stress. There are two devices available on the market. The mechanical devices used mainly in younger patients require long-term medication to prevent blood clotting around the device but have a proven long lifetime. The bioprosthetic devices have been shown to show structural deterioration in younger patients and limited lifetimes in comparison to the mechanical valves. It is important to note that neither option will retain the natural geometry and hemodynamics of the heart. A third option, the homograft, is very limited in clinical use. The word homograft means to take from another human. One of the issues with the homograft is the intricate and time-consuming surgical procedure. As well as this, the implantation of foreign tissue will require long-term immunosuppressive therapy. The other major issue is the lack of suitable donors, meaning these valves are in short supply. Importantly, this kind of valve replacement will retain the natural geometry and this will reduce stress on the left ventricle. My research here at the Trinity Centre for Bioengineering considers the design of a bioengineered decellularized xenograft for mitral valve replacement to overcome these existing problems. An ideal device would incorporate the following features. No anticoagulation therapy, viability, long lifetime, natural hemodynamics, easy surgical procedure, lack of immune reaction, and availability. The major issue with homograft replacements is size mismatch. Surgeons must find a suitable donor using pre-surgical imaging techniques. I have designed additional constructs which allow a one-size-fits-all approach to the surgical procedure by allowing modifications to be made during surgery, potentially resulting in better fitting valves. We intend to use a xenograft. A xenograft means to take from an animal source an implant in a human. If the valve is implanted directly, it will cause an immune reaction and so it needs to be treated to remove immunogenic material or decellularized. An ideal decellularization process involves the most efficient removal of cells from the tissue whilst preserving the extracellular matrix. What this means is we are left with the scaffold the body recognizes, will repopulate with its own cells and begin functional remodeling, essentially a new living valve. There are many decellularization protocols to choose from. My technique involves agitation for 48 hours in two solutions. There are a number of steps to make sure the process has been a success. I test the tissue's mechanical properties to make sure the valve can perform immediately when implanted and not fall apart. The second test is called histology to visually inspect if the cells have been successfully removed and whether there are any changes to the remaining scaffold. So far, results have been positive, and this research continues to represent a significant opportunity. Thank you for listening.